Hey guys, so today I have a really quick video for you. I have been dying to make this hair on butterfly chair. If you watched the last video, I used this same hair on fabric to make a laptop case or I added some pieces of it to finish my laptop case. And so I wanted to use the remainder for a really great project and I had this in mind. It's a really cute, simple make. It is a great beginner's friendly project if you are new to leather and wanna do some home decor updates to your home this is a great addition to add if this is something you're interested in continue watching so when it comes to the pattern piece for the butterfly chair i actually could not find one available when i was looking luckily a friend of mine had this same style chair so what i did was traced out the base of his chair tweaked it a little bit and came up with my own pattern piece i actually had to tweak the pattern to fit the frame of my chair which was completely different from his so that all worked out and of course when you're not looking for something you find everything i ended up finding later on a downloadable pattern available for you guys and i will include that in the description box below it is completely free if you decide to make this chair for yourself so I'm really picky about my leather and I wanted the spots to lay a certain way once I cut everything out. So right here I'm just placing the hair onto a chair, just a general office chair just to see how the layout would look. Then I moved everything to the floor because, you know, this hair is pretty big and it's so gorgeous. I really wanted the hair to lay a certain way. So I'm just making sure everything is smooth and even before I cut it out. And as you can see, I'm really having a hard time trying to figure out what placement to use for my uh, patterns. It's, it was almost like playing Twister. I don't know if you guys have ever played Twister, but it was a hot mess. Once you have figured out the placement for your leather and your pieces are cut out, you can honestly stitch everything together. But if you are working with a lighter weight leather or hair like this, I would highly recommend getting some heavyweight canvas to place on the back of all of your pieces. I don't know about you guys, but I take pride in my handmade pieces and I would like for them to look like I just purchased them out of a store. It doesn't hurt. So yeah, you try to make it as clean looking as possible. So I think putting a nice back to it just makes everything come together nicely. So I'm using a really lightweight leather cement. It's actually pretty liquidy, which is great because you don't want anything too sticky when you are working with canvas. So I'm just going ahead and adding that to all of my pieces, making sure I coat the edges really, really well. Quick tip, be careful in placing your canvas because once it sticks to this stuff, it does not come off and the last thing you want to have to do is cut extra pieces because you messed up your original piece so just nicely lay it on here section by section and you should be good to go the cement does dry up pretty fast so i would again recommend that you let it dry overnight it does something to the backing of this hair on leather which would probably work really great for a thinner leather as well it just stiffens everything up perfectly um, if you do have excess canvas, just go ahead and trim that off before stitching. Before you stitch the corner pockets to the main body of the chair, you want to make sure that you stitch the interior together so that everything is secure. Now this is more of a preference versus a necessity, but I went ahead and edge coated also the interiors where I just stitched. I'm also gonna edge code any other interior edges that will be visible just because I don't like raw edges. It just doesn't look good to me. So again, that's preference. Once everything is ready to go, you can start to place all your pieces together and stitch everything to completion. So as you can see, I could not let this thing live with a raw edge because this is how it looks with the raw edge, even though I could have easily cut off this excess canvas and then put some edge coat. I just, I don't know, it's something about leaving edges raw I just don't like. So 
I added this trimming and I think the trimming makes it look way better, way more clean than just leaving it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the trimming all the way around and show you guys the finished results. So another quick tip, if you do decide to add trimming around the edges of your chair, I would go ahead and take a measuring tape, divide your chair into half. So the bottom half versus the top half. Measure the top half first, cut your trimming for that, and then measure the bottom half and cut your trimming for that because they are two completely different shapes and sizes which will require either more or less trimming. In total, I ended up with four pieces of trimming, one for the top, two for the sides, and one for the bottom. The measurement is approximately 53 by an inch and a half for the top and bottom, and 17 by an inch and a half for the two sides. Of course, you might have to extend it or shorten it. That is completely up to you. You might get different measurements, but that's just an approximate of what I got for my trimming. Then I aligned each piece one by one using clips around the edge of the chair, stitched everything together, and here is the finished result. I actually think the chair looks way better with trimming on the edges versus leaving raw edge. I don't know, it's just something about this trim that pulls everything together. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do happen to make this chair or a solid leather version of it, make sure you tag Weaver Leather and Nikki and Mallory so we can see your beautiful work. All the details will be in the description box and I will see you guys on the next project. Peace out.